Guys, everyone's favorite insurgency. Okay, you shouldn't have a favorite insurgency, but if you did, it should definitely be MILF. I'm going to get demonetized. I mean the Badgers. This is Soviet Wombles. Random Antistasi BS Part 3. Let's get into it. Do not smoke at the petrol station. But an auto cannon is a okay. Okay, that looks like a really, really old school tank. Uh, also, I've never heard the term autocannon used outside of the Battletech universe. Uh, I don't know if it has a real doctrinal or firearm definition, but I think of it as being contrasted with a minigun, which has rotating barrels, um, or a, I don't know, belt-fed machine gun. Usually they're light, medium, heavy machine guns, and then you have things like indirect fire, howitzers, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Is cyanide in the gun? Yeah, of course cyanide's in the gun. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so here's what's interesting about anti-aircraft fire, is especially when it's a direct fire anti-aircraft weapon like that. So in the Second World War, aircraft did not have s smart bombs, obviously. So what you needed in order to release ordnance, you had to have a very specific flight pattern, right? Now, in the case of, say, what they called strategic bombers, those would be, you would have to level out, fly straight and steady directly over a target, and you would use the Nordic bomb site, in the case of the U.S., to line up your target, right? The, the bomb site, you would put the reticle on the thing you wanted to bomb, and then the mechanics of the box would calculate airspeed, it would factor in the arc of the bombs as they fell, and it would try to get pretty close to getting your rounds on target. The problem is obviously that the aircraft has to fly perfectly steady. Similarly, Japanese uh, Zeros, right, or other uh, naval torpedo boats or torpedo aircraft would have to line up, find the ship's broadside, line up with it, release a torpedo into the water, and then pull up as the torpedo went straight into the ship. So that necessitates, of course, lining up, a, lining up your arc right with the water. All of these maneuvers leave the plane very, very vulnerable. And so anti-aircraft fire could, yes, destroy the aircraft, but what was almost as important was disrupting them, preventing them from getting this very precise flight pattern in order to launch their weapons. So that is how a lot of this aircraft operates now. Even when we were in Afghanistan, just the threat of an RPG was enough to stop all helicopter flights to and from an area because it was so catastrophic to lose a helicopter. Bear in mind, we don't mean just military combat helicopters. Civilian helicopters, of which there were many contracted civilian helicopters that did things like ferrying personnel, moving non-critical supplies. There, were, there was a lot of those operations in Afghanistan. And, of course, the presence of an RPG would stop those as well, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but those flights got soldiers, for example, to and from leave. It got um, pallets of water or food supplies to and from bases. So it could be real. It saved uh, the U.S. a lot of dangerous patrols, but they were not. They were they were by policy neither military nor civilian aircraft wanted to mess around with anti-aircraft. So for those who are joining the stream, welcome. We are playing as a resistance movement here to resist American occupation because oil has been found here on Altis. Right, so this is going to be interesting. All right, oh, boys. It is, it is. I've got my RPG ready. Let's go. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Christ. We're going home. Okay, guys. I love how it's called the collateral damage device because that is exactly what he's going to use it as. Um, yeah, I know the Europeans have their opinions about america but i'm here to tell you that if you saw an rpg someone carrying it around in the open you would call the police God. morning si oh shit hey how you doing you right yeah but fuck you by the way okay want to point out this helmet he's wearing is a soviet issued uh helmet 
which I actually have, though it's all packed up along with everything else I own in preparation for my move. Um, yeah, so it, I, it, that obviously you can completely legally own. Why? What have I done? I messaged you three times this morning. Did you? I was requesting a, a rescue. It's the it's the time of the month, dude. You're on your period? No, not not my period. Oh. I went to get the groceries with Maya in the car, and on the way back. Hmm. His super hot girlfriend, Maya slash Gorty. Okay. <laughs> Cyanide seems like such a doofus that the chances that he has a super hot girlfriend are actually tremendous because he's, he's sort of famous, right? And if you're like a streamer of some note, then like, I mean, I, I, I stream, right? And the numbers are not bad. Especially if you're in a country with a really low cost of living, the and you can make English language content, um, it could be like life changing money, even if you're a small time streamer. I always wonder, like one of my favorite Tarkov content creators, Fairtex, is a Serbian, and I have some other Serbian friends actually, but his content is so good and it, it's actually phenomenal. But and his English is perfect. Um, but I always wonder, like, what is his life like? Like, how has this his streaming success and the monies he's earned there, right, making content for a U.S. audience, how does that impact his life in Serbia? Like, is he just, like, a baller? I feel like he might be. He, either he's a baller, though I've heard from other, um, other people, like, in the know, like, content, like, people who do, um, brand management for content creators or um, uh, like other places that content creators, just like like the nerd facet of who they are, the fact that like they can be perfectly happy with just a really fancy computer and like a two bedroom apartment um, means that they just don't spend money like celebrities do, like actors and actresses, right? She looks at me and she just goes, I'm hormonal. And I'm like, <laughs> Um, um, she was just looking at me and she was just asking all sorts of questions like, are you cheating on me? <laughs> at the end of it, I was like actually flinching every time she moved. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Listen, guys, I'm here to, I'm here to, I'm here to tell you something. I'm not here to... Everyone experiences life differently, but there's an extent where people use dumb things as excuses and for example the classic male version of this is because you worked you have a right to come home and do absolutely nothing for, because you work for eight hours and if you're an oil rig worker or like a like a a, a, a roofer okay dude eight hours is is back breaking but listen I, i'm an office drone eight hours is not killing you you can come home and you can clean up and you can do that. That said, that said, sometimes, sometimes, women just use that as an excuse to be terrible people. Like at the end of the day, some part of her was just like insecure and jealous and was like, are you cheating on me? And then wants to blame it on hormones? Like what? Like, come on, man. That's like blaming it on being hangry. Come on. You're either a good person or you're not. Hanger or no. I've been a good morning. Oh no! Oh, ow, ow, fuck. What? Hello? Hi, Maya. Oh no. Are you watching this? Yes! Oh, you're watching this thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gorty. Thank you for making me out to be a mentally unstable person. Like, I totally wasn't joking in the car at all. As if your behavior in the last few months in the chat hasn't already well established that with everybody. He called you mentally unstable. <laughs> what the fuck? Why are you hitting the back of me? No, to be fair, if, she, if you're dating Cyanide, May not be the paragon of stability. You can see I'm really trying hard to be PC here, and I'm really failing horrifically. Like sitting on my lab right now. Yeah. I'm kind of scared of her. Just, just be concerned if there's a kitchen knife missing. You a cunt. I what? You a cunt. I love you. No. No. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I will be whatever you want me to be. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is also the saddest thing on earth. Like, listen, just. You gotta be with somebody who's a partner. You don't have to agree with them. Just like you don't have to agree. 
you don't have to agree with your business partner or your cop partner, right? But like, but like, if you just if if marriage is just you getting another boss, I think you may have fucked up. I want to be single. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Holy shit, folks! You're allowed to tell all of the stories about me if you want to, but don't take them out of context because then I'll fucking kill you. It sounds like there's enough context. Also, guys, don't threaten to kill your partner, even in jest. Right? If for no other reason than the fact that us, me, I have to watch this. I don't know if she's. The kind of person that jokes about that, or the kind of person that has a track record of stabbing her boyfriends, right? And this is this is non-gendered, by the way. If you're a dude, don't even joke about killing your wife. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sarnai's hot girlfriend has been replaced with Sarnai's psycho girlfriend, folks. <laughs> That's a new title. I'm here to learn, and then that happened. Yeah. Oh, poor Cyanide. Oh, we should save him. You can't save that. Cyanide! Yeah. Don't stick your dick in crazy! But she's so hot! Don't stick your dick in crazy! She's so hot! Though. But don't stick your dick in crazy! It's blood. Oh, he's... <laughs> okay, I mean... I'm just gonna move on, guys. I just... I gotta move on. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm just moving on. Hopeless, he's lost. So, well, should we just go hit the factory or just go probe the factory? Should we take some demo charges? Uh, yeah, I can do a lot of bunch of them. Here. Yeah. Oh, Spav, when you ready? Oh. Okay, give me my car. Oh, God. Oh, son, I pinched his car. I mean, you're not getting that back, dude. Where'd you go? What the fuck? What the, what the, what, Hi. what? What part of America are they in? What the? Oh, they're in Altus because the America. Okay, got it. Come with me, brother. Come with me. Right. Oh, Sai got executed. Did you shoot cyanide? Oh, stop, you bitching! Get in the car and bugger off. Okay, listen, that's not that nice a car. Uh, I I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go on a rant here. SUVs. When Porsche and Ferrari made SUVs, I was just done. I was floored. Right? If you're a Porsche, is a high performance vehicle. That is their entire reason for existing. They're prestige cars. They're not family haulers. So you don't need to make an SUV. I understand. Trust me. I, like, I grew up... I mean, I live in D.C. I live in D.C. I see f people with more money than cents literally every single day. I can't make it to my grocery store, which of course is a Whole Foods, without seeing a bunch of rich idiots who spend their money on straight garbage. And nothing is more emblematic of that than the Porsche SUV. It's $80,000 and it does everything my Toyota does. My Toyota costs like a third of that. Same exact features. It just doesn't have the stupid branding, right? If you're going to buy a Porsche, then have a Porsche that can do Porsche shit. Have a Porsche that can drive like a Porsche, not like a Toyota. Before he shoots you. And that's exactly what they all look like. They don't look like SUVs. They look like hatchbacks that someone's pumped too much air into. They look like garbage. Never mind, just, just carry on. <laughs> oh no. Get your head down! Get your head down. Don't shoot at it. Americans. Anyway, you got your gun? Uh, no, I don't. I'm gonna tell you 100% they got spotted and already is being called onto their position right away. Why? Because they're dressed like combatants. Do you want to go back and get it? I don't need it. Listen, what you want to do is be able to quickly conceal your weapon, say, wear baggy clothes, and have a foldable stock. So you fold it, you sling it, you fold it, and you put it under your long jacket, and you hang out. Literally, you don't have to do anything. You can literally be standing there, the two of you, like this. I saw it in Afghanistan, farmers all the time, just chilling in a field, 2 a.m. And it was just like, I would be like, I would be suspicious if it didn't happen 
everywhere, every night. Apparently what they were doing is they had these really simple irrigation systems where at midnight it would stop being your field's turn to be irrigated and it would be your, your neighbor's. So you would both go out there and you would shovel out dirt from one like channel into another so that blocked the channel and then went into your neighbor's field for 12 hours. And then you shifted the dirt back and it went back around. That's, that's some low trust society shit right there. You don't need a gun, but we're going to go attack something. Bavin, you with us? Yeah, man. All right, let's start heading back up to that factory. We'll get as close as we can before we launch an attack. Where's he going? He's doing cyanide things. Cy, what are you doing, man? Oh, God. He's gone all the way back to the, the ammo thing. Huh? Oh, here he comes. Where the fuck did you go? Hmm? Where the fuck did you go? Blew up Cutlass car. Really? We waited did all that- Did you get a gun? Oh. Oh, you're such a knobhead. Did you get a trigger for the bomb? I no longer have a bomb because it blew up Cutlass car. <laughs> okay, so the bomb that we were supposed to bring on the operation to blow up the target, you've now spent on Cutlass car. Yes, but I do have a trigger this time. <sighs> for no bomb. Correct. Why am I so slow? Yeah, it's we wonder that as well. <laughs> nice. Yeah, okay, here's the thing. If these guys, maybe they're dressed exactly like the Altus, like, provincial security forces or something, and that's why they're not arousing tremendous suspicion. Why are you running backwards? Better for your, um, glutes. Right. I'm tired. You're tired? I'm walking. But we're just jogging. Is your character, like, chronically overweight? Translates into the game, man. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I... Just... Okay, man? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Damn. Yo, listen, Sai. If you're seriously overweight and you become a famous streamer and then a really hot girl takes interest in you, bro, I, I can't make it any clearer. You should run fast. Come on, it's fine. Being fat's fine, Cyanide. It means, you know, you're jolly. Santa Claus is fat and he's jolly. Fat. Oh, they put fat shaming in the game. Fat. 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 <laughs> fat. fat. Oh look, son, I had a huge hill to climb. <laughs> There's a really good reason why I'm fat. Which is? We're fighting the Americans. Sun Tzu says to defeat your enemy, you must become your enemy. No, you can't enemy. quote the author. Listen, listen, you know, only 40% of Americans are obese. The rest of us are overweight. Even I am almost overweight, believe it or not. And you see what I look like. I blame... I blame them. Uh, look, look, I am like three pounds away from being overweight. Now, again, I, I like to believe it's because I just work out a lot. But this is unrealistic body standards by the health authorities telling me how to live my life as a free American. Out of war to explain your overindulgence in snacks. So where's the factory? Hang on. Which building? Yeah. Oh, yes. come on. The Americans um, are sinners. Dude, chill, chill, chill. I got this. I got this. What have you got? Huh? What are you doing? No, it's like a kilometer. That Damn. didn't work. I'm out. <sighs> Wait, was that your only grenade? Did he throw his only grenade? Three, two, zero. Tell me your gun's got ammo. Fuck. I've Fuck. told you more than three times that I have no ammo. You didn't bring ammo. Am I the only one with a gun? Am I the only one with an actual gun? This fucking clap. Guys, okay, we're we're gonna. I'm just gonna point this out. Usually. Attacking from the top of a hillside is a good idea. It's tactically advantageous. Your enemy is low, you are high. But if you are over the crest of the hill, then what the enemy sees is it exactly like the targets we practice on. It's literally a flat surface, and you can see the enemy fully exposed wherever they go. If you do not crest the hill, think the enemy's here. On this side of the hill, you peek up, you shoot down, you hide again. But when you're here, and the enemy is here, they can see you. And you have to retreat up the hill. It's really a bad place to attack from. God damn. Tell me your gun's got ammo. Fuck! I Fuck. told you! Anyone with an actual gun! This fucking clown! No. To play is and click my name. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's my mate Benji. Why? Why is he your emblem in armor? <laughs> His face Benji's is going the side of the truck. <laughs> That's great. You got, you're gonna go off and steal shit? Yeah. All right. That's so weird. The flag's no longer a badger. It's a V. So we are.
the Badgers? Right. Uh, uh, that looks like a, an actual country's flag. I, I don't remember which one. Badgers, no. yeah, with those badgers. <laughs> Should we head out on foot towards those resources then? Okay, let's go poke the Yanks. Little bird coming in. Get your head down! Start to shoot get the effects of any blue away. Yeah, those Kiowas are brutal. Brutal. I mean, truly, like, I hope they're seeing air power is so decisive against an insurgency. You just can't mass your forces or engage for any length of time. I think we need to. Good lord, they're scary. Is that a drone? That's a drone. We stole some shitty beat up truck and they send out a four million dollar drone? Yeah, it's the most American thing of all. It's funny, it's actually... Ten years ago, at least, it was really hard to get drones. They were in such high demand, right? Because to have an armed drone required a fairly high level of, of authority to strike. But just being able to have eyes in the sky is so valuable. Again, it's like being able to see around every corner, over every hill, no surprises, nothing is going to sneak up on you. The level of security is just tremendous, tremendous. And because drones, one of the things that makes them so great is that they are cost effective but they're so like they're not that big of a risk again a 10 million dollar drone sounds like a lot but when you compare it to a hundred million dollar aircraft or a 300 million dollar aircraft a drone is trivial i mean think about the math if you're talking about a let's say a hundred million dollar aircraft versus a 10 million dollar drone you could literally have 10 of those drones destroyed before they equal the cost of one fighter aircraft but the real appeal is because drones are so light they don't have to carry a person and that means that they don't need to be have a, a cockpit or a, a life support systems or an ejector seat or a seat of any kind or any kind of tactical displays you literally they their computer is smaller than i mean it's probably the same size as my big pc desktop tower and that means that the actual aircraft can be on station a long time, hours. Sometimes it'll run its engines, fly up, and then circle very slowly as it glides down over the course of hours and hours. And then after like three or four hours of circling downwards, it turns on the engine, flies up again, spends four more hours slowly gliding down. And as it does, its eye is always pointing down at your target. It's an awesome piece of technology. And the, the, the drones are a game changer on the battlefield. Yeah, they're behind them. Yeah, there's about four of them. It's a small... Dude, that is not a small checkpoint. If you have, a, if you have what looks like an Abrams, if you have an Abrams, it's not a small checkpoint. Checkpoint, we'll be all right. Okay, I'll go down that way and then I'll... Jesus, fuck! What the shit? Right. Oh, God. Oh, God! Oh, auto cannon. Ah, oh. oh, this is bullshit. Okay, so we're learning that the Americans have absolutely no chill. Yeah, yeah, that seems about right, yeah. Good Lord. Oh, God! Yeah, we, um, one time walked into an ambush in the, in like a valley in Afghanistan somewhere, and... You know, it, it was like a little bit of a firefight, and we had to, to fight our way out of it. And but but you know, we were fine, right? Um, but it was sort of a, an unusually sophisticated attack for that region. Usually, we're talking about low concept IEDs or like snipers, like harassing fire. This was like a properly done ambush. It was actually really impressive that they did everything in the ambush that we are trained to do opening up with your largest caliber your most casualty producing weapon and trying to trap the lead in rear vehicle um very well executed and when that got up to our brigade uh they had an apache didn't ask us didn't even reference us someone someone was someone started listening to the radio communication in that region. And once they heard the right people say the right things, they sent an Apache who, who it, it was like seven hellfires. They launched at this dude, or this, this enemy force, produced allegedly between 12 and 20 casualties. And then we never had problems again.
Oh Christ, the Americans are bloody terrifying. Someone in my chat asked me how it feels that uh, we've so created an insurgency undercover? that elicits a bigger response that than Bin work. Laden did. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. As discussed, sending an Apache after one, like, pretty ineffective ambush is a standard response. Yeah, play cool. Oh, and also, also, we were instructed that the Apache strike would be followed by a show of force led by yours truly. And when they said you have everything you need to demonstrate your show of force, they meant it. I had a Kiowa, I had overhead drones, mortar teams, a sniper team. I had literally 200 additional people assigned to my 40 person platoon. Relax, smile. We're just a, a bunch of totally straight guys hanging out in a junkyard. In the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a parachute right there. There it is. Uh -huh. right, let's go mug them. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Everybody do what we can. Is he that member of the press? He's that member of the press that Moogle mentioned. I think he's supposed to be improving our reputation or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> don't harass the reporter. Stop, stop. Ch right. <laughs> Truck halt. Stopping. I'm gonna go check that building out. Gunfire, Google, you're right. Okay, there's a cop in there. Okay, I love how he's aiming at the sky with a Mossberg 500. Guys, a shotgun like a Mossberg is... has like a max, max effective range of like 50 meters. I murdered him. You murdered a cop? Doing you just shoot job. a policeman in the face. Can't do that, that's illegal. I mean, we are an illegal insurgency. That's more illegal. Soviet. So, fun fact, guys, if you're an insurgency, or a cartel, or organized crime, Having a cop who you have turned to your side is incredibly valuable. But you might be asking, how do we turn cops? Well, the answer is the same way you turn anybody else. Pablo Escobar figured it out. I don't know the words in Spanish. It's like, plumba o plata. Or, you know, it's lead or silver. And the answer is, if you join us, you will get paid. Like, seriously paid. But if you don't, we're going to kill you and your family, right? And against that choice, it's pretty easy who you need to line up with. You line up with the people with the money and the willingness to use violence. Well, again, hmm? So you can understand that, like, the kinder, friendly Americans would be like, we'd really appreciate it if you support the government. And they're like, wow, thanks. And the Taliban are like, beautiful kids you have there. You could send them to school, or we could skin them alive. Who are you gonna? Who are you gonna support? You're gonna support the person who, if you don't, is gonna skin your kids alive. Oh, for guys! Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> hey, loser! Hey, uh, Neville! How you doing? Hey, fuck you, well, Neville! Your your name is oh, just just embrace it, dude. Your name is Neville. Suck my dick. <laughs> how you doing, man? You alright? No. No? Not alright? No, because you. What, what have I done? Everything. Everything. Right, okay. What time is it where you are? Holy shit, aren't you in like California or some shit? 3am in the morning. What the fuck? Go to bed! You, where are you? Shut the fuck up. Go to <laughs> fucking bed! Why are you playing at 3 in the morning? Shut the fuck up, dude. Not my mom. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh Jesus. <laughs> Muttering to yourself on stream. I've never done that. If you've been on my Tarkov stream, you know that I talk to the map, I talk to the guns, I talk to other players, I talk to the enemy. I don't know who I think, I don't know if I expect them to respond or what. Neville, can you lend me some cash and then I'll buy the quad bike and we can we can drive back. Wait for me. Thank you. Cool. We'll head back. What was that? Oh, it's a journalist. Don't run over the- you just ran over a journalist! After that one. There was fucking- it was the member of the- I love how he's twitching. The press! After that one. Fucking, hang on. Jesus. He's alive? Dude, he's alive. He's in fact- where are you going? Are you doing a hit and run? Fucking- hang on. I'm so sorry about this. Wait, hang on. He's with the Daily Mail. Ah ha ha, the Daily Mail sucks. Accidents happen. Accidents happen? Yeah, they, they just happen. Oh god, can you- why does everyone in this game drive like a fucking nutcase? Just drive normally. Everyone just fucking puts- pedal to the met- please, slow down. Holy shit. This is part of a door. No, it's just the driver's an idiot. This is part of a door. Fuck me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are we here? Oh god, I'm alive. I don't believe it. Let's get Edberg over here. Ooh. Yeah, they've got a javelin. Oh, he's got a drone. Look at that. See, they're running drones. Though he's not using it very effectively because it's staring at the sky. Wow. Incoming. Let's, uh, let's 
Where's where's he firing? Firing? Oh god. Neville, where are you firing? Where are you firing? I don't know. What, what do you mean you don't know? What does that mean? He doesn't know. Yeah, one sec. Whoa. You're right, stealth. Yeah. Okay, a mortar incoming means means that there is a mortar round coming to your position and you need to run. A mortars out would be the command to signify that uh, you are shooting a mortar at something else. Um, we actually talked about this in earlier in actually the Halo video if you haven't watched it. There's an entire protocol of how you call for fire from a fire team uh, or a, a indirect fire element, right? So you'll request fire, you'll ask them to use a certain type of round if you know it, um, or you can just sort of ask them, you know, or you give them just a target description and you'll say, hey, I have three troops in the open, or hey, I want to put mortar rounds into this base. And then they'll say, okay, Roger, uh, you give them the grid coordinate, and then, you know, they'll send the rounds, they'll say rounds out, and then usually they'll give you um, a, like a time hack and say, oh, the rounds will hit in 10 seconds. You'll wait and watch them. Right, but the key is they say rounds out. Rounds incoming is get down. Whoa. Hurt a little bit. Oh, God. Bearing zero. Someone shoot him. What the fuck? Bearing zero on the hill. Right. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. The looky loo businessman is the most American part of this whole thing. For reasons I do not understand, Americans will see like a violent situation unfolding. And only a tiny number will flee the situation, will leave. That is, for the record, the most common sense decision. If you see two people fighting, right, do you know that neither of them has a gun? Do you know that neither of their friends has a gun? Of course you don't. You have no idea, because this is America. You should leave. You should leave, and you should call the police. Unless it is something so egregious and so horrific that you cannot in good conscience leave it to be, right, you should leave quickly. What you should not do is film it, randomly intervene in some business that you don't know anything about, or just stand there looking like a fool. But I have seen so many videos where that has happened. Good and more often than not, it goes badly for the bystanders. Oh, I'm dead! He's fucking killed me! Sniper Wolf over there. What's, the, what's with the businessman in the other room just chilling? Oh, there's a pink guy doesn't give a shit. Hey, so weird. Are you coming with me? Yeah. YOLO. Why is he saying YOLO? What are you doing? Oh, he's going to win. I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, fucking hell. What are we doing? I want dead you there, man. You're engaging the. Uh, dude? What? Why are we driving straight towards the outpost? Because what we men do? To do what men do. Get shot! You're driving towards a machine gun! Oh my god. He's <laughs> actually an idiot. He is actually, actually an idiot. And I'm actually still alive. Fucking Neville. Is anyone on this? Fun fact, uh, in a combat zone, you're not going to wear your, your boonie cap when you're leaving the base. Come. Yeah, we're on it. If you see Neville, can you tell him he's a fucking turnip? Do you need medical assistance? No, but he will. Neville, are you alive? Oh, he's alive. All right, I'm patching you up. Patch that arm. Stop the bleeding. Check the morphine. We've discussed this in other videos. So, okay, he's got a suppressed M4, which is cool. But in order to suppress an M4 and have the su suppressor function properly, you need to use subsonic rounds, rounds that don't break the sound barrier when they're shot. And the problem is, is that in order to have a round that's so underpowered it doesn't break the sound barrier, it is not going to have a very long range or very consistent uh, ballistic trajectory. So you can either have a suppressed weapon or you can just have a, a fully potent weapon. Now, when you're really close, when you're talking about close quarters, like combat, you know, mount or whatever, then, and, and your distances up to the enemy are like less than 100 meters, then subsonic rounds are A-OK. -okay. Inject epinephrine to make the him conscious. Rocket up the road, by the way. Okay, there we go. I just love... Fucking willy. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me on this bizarre stream. Uh, this was weird. No other way to put it. Uh, be sure to check out the podcast.
be sure to check out other stuff. Uh, check out everything. All the links are in below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.